Hi guys, I'm Julie and in this video I'm going to take you through my lesson about the causes of the seasons. Now this lesson is advanced for fifth grade. The causes of the seasons don't really come up in NGSS until middle school, Earth and Space Science, DCI 1, uh, Standard 1. And so I decided to still introduce this concept to my students in fifth grade so that they have some more background before getting to constellations and also so that they see it um, in middle school and they've seen it before at a lower level um, so they can build upon some of that prior knowledge. You could also choose if you bought my space bundle to um, just do this lesson with your more advanced students, do it with your whole class, or skip it all together and just go right to constellations. Um, it's, it's definitely not all the way up to the level of the middle school standard. Um, it, it's pared down quite a bit, um, but it still is definitely an advanced lesson for kids. Um, so in this video, first I'm going to go through the causes of the seasons, uh, because this is often one of the biggest scientific misconceptions, even with adults. Um, there's a really famous video of uh, interviewing Harvard graduates at their graduation, and very few of them could say the real reason uh, that seasons happen. The second is I'm going to model the light intensity lab, and the third thing I'm going to do in the video is to set up and explain the classroom seasons model. So let's start with what causes the seasons on Earth. A lot of my students come into the fifth grade with the misconception that summer happens when the Earth is closest to the sun during its orbit, and winter happens when the Earth is farthest away from the sun during its orbit. Now I can understand why they think this because it's a much more simple explanation than what is actually happening. But there are a couple reasons we know that this is not true. One of the first pieces of evidence is that the Earth's orbit is actually closest to the sun in January. Um, and if it's closest to the sun in January, it should be summertime, but the northern hemisphere actually has winter during that time. The other piece of evidence is that the hemispheres have different seasons at the same time. In January, the whole Earth is closest to the Sun in its orbit, and so both parts of the Earth should have summer in that time, but only the southern hemisphere has summer. The northern hemisphere has winter, so it has to be something other than how close or far away the Earth is. So now that we know the biggest misconceptions, let's look at what the actual reasons for the seasons are. The first thing we're going to need to understand is direct and indirect light. When light is direct, it's coming down and striking the surface at a perpendicular angle at 90 degrees. It's more intense and stronger light. When light comes in at an angle, it's indirect um, and it's less intense, it's weaker light. So what does this have to do with seasons? Well, it's summer in parts of the Earth where the sun's rays are striking at a more direct angle for more hours per day. That warms up the Earth more. And it's winter in parts of the Earth where the sun's rays are less direct and shine for fewer hours a day. So now we know that light intensity makes the seasons change. But what makes light intensity change during different times of the year? It doesn't stay the same seasons all the time. There are two main things that cause light intensity to change, and that's the tilt of the Earth and the Earth's orbit around the Sun. Compared to the plane of its orbit, the Earth is tilted at 23.3 degrees. In this picture, this would be June, because the Northern Hemisphere is tilted towards the Sun. What this does is allow the Northern Hemisphere to get more direct light and to be in summertime. The southern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun's light, and so the rays are going to be more indirect, and it's going to be winter in the southern hemisphere. But the Earth doesn't stay in this position all the time. It orbits the sun. And as it orbits the sun, you'll see its axis stays pointing in the same fixed direction in space, so that by the time it gets about halfway through the orbit, six months later, the northern hemisphere is now pointing away from the sun and getting indirect light, so that's winter time now in the northern hemisphere, and the southern hemisphere is now pointing towards the sun, getting direct light, more intense light, and it's summertime there. 
Now I'm going to show you the setup for the very quick light intensity lab. I've already downloaded this light meter app onto my phone. You can get free light meter apps for phones or for tablets. You can also use probeware if your school has probeware with a light sensor. And then I used this protractor that's included in the packet and copied it onto cardstock so it's a little more sturdy. Uh, I lined up the 90 degree line with the front facing camera and I put a little piece of tape to secure it. You could also have a student hold it, but you're going to want to make sure they're holding it pretty straight up and down. Next, make sure that the uh, camera is on the front facing camera. Right now, mine is set on the back facing camera. So when I flip it around, there we go. I should be able to see my face or what's going on in this um, front camera. Now, students are going to take their flashlight, put it right at the edge at 30 degrees, and hold it steady until um, the light stops, uh, the light sensor stops changing. Move it up to 60 degrees. We should see the light intensity get higher. 90 degrees, it should get the highest. Right now, we can see it's almost at 600. Go to 120 degrees. And lastly, 150 degrees. 150 and 30 should be the lowest. 60 and 120 should be the middle and 90 should be much more intense. So now using this little mini model, I'm gonna show you how to set up your classroom for the seasons model. It's really important to do the model in physical space when you're teaching this because it's hard for kids to visualize what certain things mean. Uh, they're really used to seeing like diagrams like this without a physical model and a lot of kids can't actually visualize it, um, what like is actually happening, especially in these positions here. And so to do it first in a model will make their, when they use this diagram, much better later. So this is the model setup. In the middle of the room, uh, you should represent the sun either with a sign or a chair with a sign on it or a lamp. Then in the front of the classroom, put up the September sign. On the left hand side, December and also a reminder that the axis of the northern hemisphere is always pointing this direction in space. That way students will remember which way um, the earth should be oriented when it's in any of these positions. March on the back wall and June on the right hand wall. The last thing I made was a tiny example of an earth model. You would want to make yours larger since you'll be using a real classroom, uh, but this is just a styrofoam craft ball. You can get these in a much larger size and I put a wooden skewer through it. Um, it really shows up well for the uh, axis. And then along the center, um, I drew with a permanent marker to make the equator so that students can easily tell the Northern Hemisphere from the Southern Hemisphere. So for the physical model, you'll be going around the room two different times to show the orbit twice. The first time around, we'll be focusing in on just June and December and some of the very basic questions about that. The second time you'll be using uh, worksheet seven and you'll be getting a deeper look to start to incorporate some things that are happening in March and September and also the Southern Hemisphere. Although the focus will still be on what's happening in the Northern Hemisphere in June and December. So using worksheet six, you'll start your model with June. You want to make sure that the Earth is pointing, the northern hemisphere is pointing over to this wall with the sign that says the axis of the northern hemisphere is always pointed in this direction. And then you'll ask students the three questions on page six. Which way is the northern hemisphere facing? Towards the sun, away from the sun, or neither? Now say towards the sun. Is the northern hemisphere getting direct or indirect light? Well, because this is tilted towards the sun, it'd be getting direct light. And what season is it? Summer, 
because it's getting the direct more intense light. At that point, students can come to this model and make some notes. After you finish up with June, you'll explain to students that the Earth doesn't just stay here, it orbits the sun throughout the year. So keeping the axis pointed towards the left-hand wall, you'll go towards the front of the classroom. You can tell students you'll come back to September the second time you go through the model if you want to, and you'll come to December. You can say that takes six months to go from June to December, and now ask them the same series of questions that you did for June on page six, and students will see that the Northern Hemisphere is now in winter time. They can come to their worksheet and label the Northern Hemisphere as winter during this time. The second time we go around in the model, we will put a little more of the work on the students and also start to incorporate some of the more um, complex ideas. So the second time that we're at June, we'll ask students to describe the entire process, including the tilt of the axis, the light intensity, and the season that it is. It's really important that students don't just say the northern hemisphere is closer to the sun, so it's summer. Um, the students need to say that the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, so it's getting direct light. The second thing we'll ask here is what's happening in the southern hemisphere? How is it different than what's happening in the northern hemisphere? And students should be able to identify that the southern hemisphere is now pointing away and it should be winter time while it's summertime in the northern hemisphere. We'll continue along on our orbit and stop this time at September. So usually in a 2D diagram, it's really hard to actually tell what's happening here. But because this is 3D and in front of the students, they should be able to see that the northern hemisphere is not pointing towards the sun or away from the sun, it's neither. Um, and both hemispheres are actually getting equal amounts of light from the sun at this point. Uh, so they can identify that this is fall because it's in between June and December in both the um, amount of direct light that it's receiving and in the time. We know that June is the summer for us in the northern hemisphere and December is winter and the season that's in between is fall. And then they can come to their diagrams and write that on the diagram as well. Next, when we get back to December, we'll do the same thing we did for June. Again, um, having the students talk through the whole process and also what's happening in the Southern Hemisphere. And when we get back to March, they'll do the same thing that they did in September where the northern hemisphere is not pointing towards or away from the sun, it's neither, and both the northern and southern hemispheres are getting equal amounts of light, and they will see that that is spring. And they'll write spring on their diagram. Now, this is my diagram at this point. You could also have students identify, put an arrow here and say it's winter during that second time through and an arrow here for the southern hemisphere and say this is summer. Um, that's totally up to you. You could also have them add more details about the tilt and light intensity and things in this diagram if you want to.